You know, it seems to me uh, it's, it's, it is a civil rights issue, but it's also kind of like uh, um, humanitarian. It seems to me we, we know that the police officers, the police department, uh, obviously are frankly racist. I mean, actions, ver actions and words. But it seems like uh, they go they're, at it. They they're very homophobic and they're very transphobic. And the amount of homophobic slurs that they have tossed at people they know are queer is outlandish. And so were they it, tossing it that night when we were arrested? Um, I didn't hear it myself, but I heard that it did happen. And every single other previous arrest of of queer people has been visited by slurs, including during the arrests. Yeah. Yeah. And do you do you see it as uh, them trying to do this so that you won't protest anymore, or them trying to do it to just get their shits and giggles? Well, you know, they did it to that re the reporter who was uh, arrested, um, the one that there's that nice big article about that they were beating in front of his wife. And mm -hmm. I can't repeat what they said; it's way too obscene. But you know, they love to throw out these homophobic slurs because they're they're such big boys. You know, I mean, um, and one of the one of the things that I would like to mention is that there's like no medical care <laughs> in the justice center at all, and those cells are horrifying. Like the solitary cells, way worse than the holding cells. Yeah. Like how so? Like here's an example. Okay, there was like caked there was caked urine about this this thick, in in the toilets, in solitary, and it reeked. And there was shit on the walls. It's like, are you kidding? And there's even shit on the ceiling. I'm like, have they cleaned this place in five years? Like, does this ever get inspected? This is a city-run facility. How in the world did they get away with this? Mm -hmm. So it's like a punishment tactic on top of being in solitary. You're in a filthy fucking little dungeon cell mm -hmm. with no amenities, obviously. And what about uh, the, the, the physical aspect? They were patting down people in front of uh, people in the holding cells. Do they, are they uh, patting you down more, harder? Do they, do they, do they kind of like make weird comments? Like what parts do you have while they're patting you down? Yeah. So um, one experience that I had was the first time I was arrested, uh, the cops kind of acted like um, children holding uh, my bra. They confiscated my bra at the time and they held it off at like a distance and were like, ew, like a middle school boy might. Um, stuff like that, just very immature kind of behavior. This is, she's not talking about a frat party. This is the St. Louis Police Department that's saying this stuff. Yeah. The Metro. Well, so that was, that was the people in the Justice Center. Okay. Um, so the people who work in the Justice correct, Center, correct. yeah, they're correctional officers. They're not technically police officers, but as far as anyone really is concerned, they are. Um, it's the same group of people, it's the same concept of people, um, but yeah, with that kind of thing, like, they are very immature. They ha technically were supposed to have had uh, a training on trans individuals and dealing with that within the justice system prior to my showing up, but obviously that wasn't a successful training program. Um, I don't know if there's been any more since then, but from what y'all have said, it still hasn't been very successful. Um, and add to that that there's like no medical care again, like yeah. no medical care, and people do come in injured, and that nurse is just gonna be there, sit there, and be like, "Oh, you're fine," yeah, and, and make you sign the form after you take her test, saying that you consented to do it. Yeah, and then they're gonna put you in solitary for ten hours, which is what happened to me. I have hypoglycemia and you know a glucocorticoid crisis problem. I'd like, you know, I'm having heart pain. I'm gonna have a heart attack. You better give me something to eat or drink. What do they do? No, you're fine. She orders a soda in front of me. I thought it was for me, but she sends me to solitary where I literally don't get anything to drink or eat for 10 hours. Meanwhile, they're serving the guys food twice. I hear that the women didn't get anything, but at least they were in somewhere that they could actually drink out of like the, <laughs> I mean, the water, yeah. yeah, I mean like our solitary cell was so disgusting. Like I would have probably gotten like Dysentery. a deadly illness if I would have tried to drink out of like the sink thing. Yeah, there was no way to, to there was no way to drink anything for 10 hours. Uh, one aspect of medical issues that happened was uh, a friend of mine had to sit in an old tampon for the entirety of her time there. I think towards the end she finally got the ability to change it but she had bled through all of her clothes. Um, toxic shock syndrome is a thing. Uh, that's just kind of like a she obviously asked, I need to... Yeah, she asked multiple times. Um, I, yeah, I believe yeah. from the beginning. She was locked mm -hmm. up with y'all. Mm -hmm. um, 
but that's kind of like one one very vivid example of how little they really do care. Um, I know one individual exited from the Justice Center with a taser barb still in his body. Um, yeah, I mean, it sums it up really, really quite viscerally. And for you, uh, does this, do, do you feel like, obviously they're trying to get everyone to stop protesting, but do you feel like uh, with the transgender uh, males, females, it's kind of like a little extra, uh, oh, yeah. a little extra kind of brutalization? Well, yeah, I mean, they have extra ammunition right there. Uh, in my case, they used my legal name, despite my saying that I went by Emily, that I've gone by Emily for years now. I use it in my personal life. I use it at my work. Uh, they didn't even write that down as an alias. They used my legal name, which is very masculine, uh, at every opportunity and in front of large crowds of people. I was outed. Eventually, they had to post names and addresses. So anyone who wants to, who was in there, knows which name goes to the transgender woman and can find me. That very specifically endangers me. And by the way, the St. Louis Police Department has literally been tweeting out, doxing people, uh, literally. Tw doxing people tweeting out arrestees' home address, numbers. I don't know what their rationale for that is, uh, because like you said, there's plenty of Blue Lives Matter fanatics. And, I mean, it's uh, pretty obvious what the rationale is. Oh, the, right. the rationale is just to try to make it so nobody wants to protest, and that has been affecting our community. Um, I've had people who have been friends of mine who have been harassed by the Blue Lives Matter folks. I mean, we can talk to the owner of Pie Pizza, how he was harassed and his workers were harassed and death threats and bomb threats were called into the building. Um, that's the reality. Like these, these folks who are the Blue Lives Matter supporters, they're just proto-fascists ready to line up behind whoever's going to tell them what to go do. And when STL MPD decides hey, this is your target, they go after that target. Um, they don't care who it is. It is incredibly irresponsible to do so, especially with a trans protester, because there is already so much trans violence in St. Louis. Um, I mean, we had Kiwi Herring, who was harassed constantly by her upstairs neighbors and then shot by police uh, recently. And that story has been totally paved over. Nobody pays attention to she it. She was killed? Yeah, she was shot and killed by police in front of one of her children. What was her name? Kiwi Herring. Um, definitely look up more about that story. Uh, also, Ali Steinberg, who was um, a young trans girl in Missouri, kind of more of the rural side, was murdered here. So we have two kind of like very clear trans-related murders in this, this state. And it's very, very concerning when a trans person has their addresses or their names published in a way that it's like, here's an individual for this group of people to target who are typically armed and typically have that kind of like political ideology that would push them to go and do those kind of physical attacks. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I've received plenty of my own death threats walking through the city, but that would be nothing compared to if people knew exactly where I lived. I mean, I think it's the epitome of fascism, right? It's the epitome of it. It's, it's taking this sort of nationalist, statist force and coming down on anyone who disagrees with a literal iron fist. Do you guys have, um, you know, obviously if you're African American, you have the NAACP, other, other groups. Have you had um, activist groups or professional groups uh, filing anything against the St. Louis PD, uh, going to the media, advocating for you? Obviously, you know, there's independent media, but yeah, what, right. what, because this is like, this is kind of like, this is horrifying. It is. Yeah. I mean, I think that it's so horrifying, though, in some ways that we end up falling through the cracks because the cases are so bad that we end up with, at least in my example, I'll have lawyers who are interested at first and then they realize how big the case would be and they're like, oh God, I don't have like $200,000 to sink into this. I'm a small firm. So, I mean, it would take huge firms, really, yeah. to advocate properly for one anyone who's issue, trans who's been abused. Yeah. One other issue is the one semi-advocacy group in St. Louis, the Metro Trans Umbrella Group, is not allowed to be political, and they have chosen not to be political because it's more of like a community building. What's this? It's not political once you're in the jail and exactly. you're being treated this way. Exactly. Um, all things are political. You can't separate politics from any decision you make. but because of the way that this group is run, they can't engage in these kind of like political things that the NAACP can. 
Um, it would be amazing to have something like that uh, formed in St. Louis or just in like Missouri as a whole or have better uh, resources nationally to be able to utilize, but it's just not currently there. There's not the infrastructure. There's not really the funding to try to get that going. Also, I mean, we need to talk about the fact that queer organizations just leave trans people behind because often we're the ones that are getting targeted most, but are we the ones that get all the lawyers? Not really. We usually kind of fend for ourselves. Um, one One major thing that certain groups need to keep in mind is the idea of uh, intersectionality. It's been very difficult to try to get that conversation to keep going on in St. Louis, uh, within the protest scene, just in the country as a whole. Um, Having the understanding of, hey, when you have like a black person who is experiencing racism, if that black person is also trans and experiencing transphobia, um, that is a double that's a double impact really um it it is really obviously affected when when you look at the names and the faces of the trans folks who have been murdered in this country and 2017 is uh i think already surpassed 2016 in the number of trans murders um but it's mostly trans women of color trans folks of color uh and that is an intersection that a lot more groups that focus on people of color need to try to focus on uh, white folks and white allies, obviously same, um, but I know I've talked to certain like trans black folks in the movement and they've been, they've been voicing some uh, discomforts and some insecurities with certain things that have been going on, but that's just kind of how it is and hopefully we can push intersectionality further, but um, at this point we don't have that kind of like allyship within organizations like the NAACP and with other groups to have this one unified uh, advocacy branch to kind of say, hey, trans issues are important, but also black trans issues and black issues and voter registration and uh, gentrification. All these things are issues. There's just not that coalescing around a singular movement. And until that happens, I just can't see huge changes being made. that's my political spiel, and I totally went off topic, but uh, thanks cool. so much. It's all connected. Uh, Leslie, you know, you guys have spoke very calmly, which is kind of troubling to me. Like you say a lot of these things that they did ca- casually because you're used to it. Yeah. But if you hear it on first draw, it's kind of like right. I'm not used to hearing that because it sounds you know, like another country. I'll be honest. I'll be honest. Uh, I don't like being touched by people that I don't like, and uh-huh. I really don't like police. I mean... I've been to so many different large, almost war zone scenes um, that I really don't like police. To me, they're over there. They're fascists. I've seen so many abuses. I've been threatened so many times. I, it's just something where I don't like them, right? Well, that's what I was going to ask and you so all. And when they're touching me, and, and then repeatedly, over and over again, it's like something I'm like, you know, I'm not, I'm not here. I'm not experiencing this. I'm up here in the sky, this isn't happening, you know, and that's, I was literally blowing, well, I was handcuffed, so I was blowing yeah. kisses to the crowd, and they were groping me again after taking me back out of the paddy wagon in front of everyone. I'm just like, I'm being groped by riot cops. Great, in front of all my friends. Love y'all, here's my legal name and date of birth. I mean, it's just, and it didn't hit me, it didn't hit me for a couple days, and then it hit me, and it hit me all at once, and I was able to reach out to people, and everyone was so beautiful and so loving to me that you know it really helps me but that's something that I think we need to talk about is that a lot of us do have a lot of trauma and it's it's difficult and it's difficult to keep standing up and continue fighting these battles but we have to because if we don't fascism wins and the people's rights don't win and for us, it's a life and death struggle, you know, for our own rights and everyone else's rights, because either we're all free or none of us are free. Great place to stop. Uh, well, I think uh, they're not going to uh, they're not going to be silent anymore because I will stay on this. So thanks. Thanks for everybody for talking yeah, thank to me. You. Yeah. Thank you.